Hello, my name is Nicholas Flutie, and today I will be discussing the Stonewall Jackson Monument at Manassas National Battlefield Park in Virginia. The monument depicts Jackson and his horse, Little Sorrel, looking over the battlefield. Jackson faces east, just as he did when confronting the oncoming Union Army during the Battle of Bull Run in 1861. The lettering on the base of the monument reads, there stands Jackson like a stone wall. What the monument does not tell the 700,000 annual visitors to Manassas Battlefield is what Jackson fought for, slavery. The state of Virginia erected the Jackson Monument to perpetuate the lost cause, the belief that the Confederacy fought a heroic and just fight during the Civil War that did not center around the preservation of slavery. In 1936, just after the 75th anniversary reenactment and celebration of the Battle of Bull Run, thoughts for a monument commemorating Stonewall Jackson emerged. However, no action into this endeavor took place until 1938, when the federal government obtained the deed to the land from the Sons of Confederate Veterans, the SCV, and the General Assembly of Virginia appropriated $25,000 for the monument's construction. In November of 1938, the Virginia Fine Arts Commission announced a competition for the monument's design. The commission reviewed over 80 entries, and on March 4th, 1939, they announced Italian sculptor Joseph Pelia as the winner of the competition. Pelia's design for Jackson, however, did not accurately represent him. As a result, Pelia and the Arts Commission immediately faced backlash for the proposed model, especially from Confederate veterans and organizations. Controversy stemmed from Polia's depiction of Jackson and the size of Little Sorrel. Veterans claimed that Jackson looked more like Union General Ulysses S. Grant and complained that the statue made him appear to be 60 years old, despite the fact that Jackson had died a young man. Jackson's burly, Herculean physique in the model received much criticism. Although Polia stated he wanted to show Jackson's strength and power, a spokesman for the United Daughters of the Confederacy, the UDC, objected to the model and said that Jackson's strength was a spiritual strength, not a physical one. Veterans viewed Little Sorrell's depiction as a monstrosity, stating that he appeared as a common plow horse instead of a prize mount. One person remarked how the horse, quote, looks more like a buffalo, and that model makes the horse seem three times as big in front as behind. Not only were veterans voicing their concerns, but Confederate organizations such as the SCV and the UDC also protested against the monument. Although bombarded with protests and lacking support from both Confederate veterans and organizations, the Arts Commission nonetheless refused to change the monument's design. The commission finalized Polia's design and construction of a muscular Jackson riding an equally massive Little Sorrel began later that year. The Arts Commission's decision to use Polia's design for the Jackson Monument highlights their belief in the lost cause. Although the monument's portrayal of Jackson was inaccurate, the commission refused to change the design, even in the face of opposition from Confederate veterans and organizations. Future visitors to Manassas would see Jackson as a Herculean hero of the Confederacy without having to acknowledge his commitment to the preservation of slavery in the United States. The dedication ceremony for the monument took place on August 31st, 1940 with 2,000 people in attendance. Virginia Governor James H. Price delivered an address to the crowd. However, the most anticipated moment of the ceremony was the keynote address delivered by historian Douglas Southall Freeman. Freeman used the opportunity to relate Jackson and the Civil War to the current political climate. In 1940, Americans faced the onset of World War II. Merging both the commemoration of the past and the prospects of the future, Freeman stated that America, quote, need have no fear for her present security if she will truly apply the lessons of war as taught and practiced by Jackson. From 1940 to 2017, the Stonewall Jackson Monument remained out of the spotlight. However, in wake of the Charlottesville riots, the monument made headlines again after a series of vandalisms. The events at Charlottesville triggered an increase in outspoken demand to remove Confederate monuments and names from public land. As a result, the Stonewall Jackson Monument became a target of multiple vandalisms. On October 4th, 2017, two months after the Charlottesville riots, vandals defaced the monument by pouring a large quantity of white paint on the base. Three years later, on July 1st, 2020, 
Vandal spray painted the letters BLM multiple times in different colors. A year later, on July 4th, 2021, park rangers discovered the monument's base covered in red and yellow paint, along with the words, no glory to racists. Although seen as racist and problematic in recent years, the Jackson Monument remains at Manassas Battlefield. According to the National Park Service, policy prohibits the removal of any monument on federal land unless directed by Congress. In July of 2020, the U.S. House of Representatives passed a bill which contained a provision to remove all references of the Confederacy from national park land, including the Jackson Monument. This legislation, however, caused significant outcry from the national park community, with critics of the bill stating that the removal of Confederate monuments would negatively impact education about the Civil War. At the end of 2020, the Senate ultimately eliminated the provision from the bill, allowing Confederate monuments to remain on national park land. After the attempted legislation in 2020, there have been no current plans by Congress to remove the Jackson Monument. There are also no interpretive markers at Manassas to offer contextualization for Stonewall Jackson and the monument. As a result, Jackson's jaded legacy lives on at Manassas, maintaining the lost cause mythology on federal land and spreading these beliefs to everyone visiting the battlefield. Thank you very much.